Yeah, so we're gonna continue on with the uh, power function and modeling. So let's, let's actually do the modeling part now, okay? So let's go ahead and we're gonna do example number five on page 179. But before we do that, let's go ahead and read. I want you guys to read the paragraph above that where it says, noted astronomer Johannes Kepler. You can go ahead and read that paragraph to yourself. So we're going to actually work with the data that Kepler had, okay, when he was developing his three laws of movement in astron astronomy, okay? So let's go ahead and look at the table 2-10, two, two and this is the data that he had. He had the average distance from the sun, sun in gigameters, which is 10 to the ninth meter, or 10 to the ninth meter, okay? And then you had the period or the orbit days, how long it took for that planet to revolve around the sun, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and try to model this using your calculator. So I want everybody to go ahead and bring your calculator out. So go ahead and bring your calculator out. We're gonna go ahead and input the average distance from the sun and that data will go in L1, and then the orbit days or the, pre the period of orbit days will go into L2. So go ahead and put L1 and L2 in there. And in order to get to that, you have to go to stat, and then you go edit, and then it should bring up L1 and L2. You should be able to go ahead and start putting or inputting the data into your calculator. Go ahead and holler out when you're done inputting the data so that I know that you've done. I'm done. Okay. Anybody else? Caden, do you have a calculator this time? I believe so. Okay. Let's go and input the uh, L1 and L2. Has everybody been able to access L1 and L2? Yes. Okay, that's good. Lila, are we having any problems? No. Sam? Hello, Sam. I thought the thumbs up would be good enough. Sorry. Oh, I, no, I'm, I'm, I can't see you. I'm, I'm, I'm in a different kind of view. Okay, so um, yeah, so everybody go ahead and uh, do the L1 and L2. Once you're done with L1 and L2 and you've all, you've, you've inputted all the data, then you would go to stat calc. And when you go to stat calc, it'll bring up all the various ways that you can do a regression. And in here, you will be doing the power regression. So you should be able to find the power regression. And go ahead and select that. And go enter, 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 and you should come out with some data.
this is what you should have came out with. You should have come out with this with the A. I think this is the A and this is the B number. Is that correct? My B is 1.49962. Yeah, 1.49962 is very, very close to 1.5. And the A, did you get 0.2? Absolutely. Okay, cool. So also, some of you might got, have gotten an R or R squared value. Did anybody get an R or an R squared value associated with this regression? It was 0 0.9. They were both one pretty much. Yeah, 0 0.09999999 uh, is one. Yeah, right, pr pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So what that indicates is that you have almost or pretty much a perfect match. In other words, the data points are going to follow this equation to the T. Okay. All right. So basically, this is what. So this is what your calculator found, right? It took you guys all of two minutes to do this, okay? Johannes Kepler, if you look at his bio there, he was born in 1571, died in 1630, okay? Lived for 59 years and he did every single thing that he, so he developed, he was able to develop this equation by hand, okay? So this is absolutely amazing, okay? That Kepler would be able to look at this data, the data that you saw, okay? And without a calculator, looking at it and say, this is it, and come up with this equation, okay? And this is why he is always, a lot, a lot of times he is known as the father of astronomy, okay? Right. Okay, so anyway, so that's how you would do this. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and flip the page. If you go to example number six, example number six shows you a different one. It's a rubber ball data. Go ahead and read that. And I want you to go ahead and try to do the same thing. All right, in other words, you're gonna have to clear out your L1 and L2, reset your L1 and L2 to the distance and the speed. Here you are looking at a speed versus distance when you, uh, a ball at the impact. What is this? Doesn't really say what it is. Oh, the distance traveled. The distance traveled. Okay. So go ahead and see if you can do that. And see if you were able to come out with the same data on page 181, or the same equation of page 181. And if you were able to do that, you can go ahead and start going back and working on your homework again, because we are done with 2.2, okay? Mr. On, mm -hmm. I got a quit or go to. 